package of regional wrestling on KCLY is brought to you in part by Union State Bank, Kearse Thriftway of Clay Center, Washington and Mankato, Anderson Equipment, Central Office Service and Supply, by Girton Propane in Clay Center, Twin Valley, the Clay County Wrestling Club, and United Bank and Trust. Welcome back once again to Hayes High School. We're at 120 pounds in the second round now, so the championship quarterfinals. And Peyton Lane of the Clay Center Tigers on the match. His matchup against a fellow NCKO competitor from the Chapman Irish. And uh, no score, just getting underway in this first period. In the first match of the tournament for Peyton Lane, who is battling through some injuries that he's uh, just kind of dealing with right now and, and doing what he can. But he's had a really, really good freshman year. Really has. He hadn't wrestled Chatterfield that, I, that I'm aware of. We kind of went through and, and looked, and he didn't wrestle him there at the, at the duel. Uh, Shutterfield wrestled Marty Robinson right. and uh, beat Marty 7-4, to four, I believe it was. So both wrestlers in the middle of the mat. It's early in the first. There's one minute left. No score. Peyton Lane of the Tigers at 120, and then we'll also have at 132 Tristan Metters coming up in this round, and then a few more down the line from there, but those are the first two to get, take the match for the Tigers in the second round. Both these wrestlers had a bye in the first round, so they neither one have, have wrestled yet in the tournament, and uh, I'm sure they were anxious to get on the match. They ain't going. Freshman for the Tigers, a senior for the Irish. He has a two-on-one rushing right now. Sutterfield's doing a good job blocking with his head, but uh, he goes into a front headlock of Peyton. Peyton swings, swivels are close to being out of bounds, and there they go out. It's a huge match because if you get this one, you're in the championship semifinal. I mean, it happened so quickly on the, on the opening day of the regional championships. Right now, Shutterfield having a problem with his head here. I think it came off three or four times, and uh, officials finally saying, you know what, let's get this thing to where it won't come off your head like that. They let the coach go and do some work with Sutterfield. Nate Lane patiently waiting on the opposite side of the mat, ready to go. With injury time running, can't tell. I think there was somewhere around 30 seconds remaining in the first period. 21 seconds are back underway. Nate Lane for the Tigers here at 120 pounds. The quarterfinal second round. He's really heavy with the hands, really banging hard, trying to get that two-on-one. Does an outside Single sweep, missed the leg, and they go back and head to head. He just keeps banging hard and trying, and nothing there. They go out of bounds at the end of the first period. Zero zero. By all means, aggressive in that first period for Lane. No score though for either wrestler, and now Peyton will choose the down position to start period two. Good place to be. And Sutterfield starts on Peyton's right side. Ball start by Peyton it had to be very, very close. Oh, yeah. He was really on, as I thought. Had a good, good stand up going, and now we may have blood. Blood, it looks like. Yeah, because I can see Sutterfield now checking to see if he has any. Tigers, Peyton Lane wrestling right now at 120 pounds. We'll keep a close eye on the other match because uh, soon we'll be headed. Uh, well, there is a full weight class. From the quarterfinal side of 126, maybe a little bit before Tristan Metters goes, but he'll be wrestling in this round. Also for the Tigers in the uh, second round, Hunter Mullen at 145, Thomas Rickley at 152, Gabe Ware at 160, Ryan Tears at 170 pounds, Seth Bloom at 182, and Evan Stanley at 220. Those are all in this uh, second round that will be wrestling for the Tigers. Peyton upset will be so for bleeding like that. He, he was Felt like he was in good control and kind of a good, you know, good energy there, and right. he was ready to go. And he slapped his knee like, "Dang it!" I was ready to go. And when he started, comes out in good shape. He's to his feet, peeling, peeling hands. Nothing there. Sutterfield does a good job of bringing him back to Matt. He's got a Lundy on him. Peyton's really working hard to get that off. Peeling the hands now. He's up and out and away. So he gets one, leading here with a minute and forty seconds. Remaining in the second, up one to nothing. Yeah, good job by Peyton Lane to get the lead. Now let's see if he can get to a takedown. He was close a couple of different times and really went after Sutterfield in that first period. He really did. He was working heavy hands and doing a lot of two-on-one rushes. And first really good head contact I've seen for 
where Clay Center Russell trying to use that head with a two on one and gain that position and angle. Uh, Sutterfield tried to go to a front headlock and unable to get there. Peyton got out of it. Now, again, working for risk control. Started to try to set up the throw, it almost looked like, then backed away from it. Now they go outside the circle and whistle to a stop with 58 seconds to work in the second period. Coach advises and Peyton, you know, you crinkle your neck like that, you can't get that head in there and you'll have better head position. So Peyton's going to go back and try again. What's the start? And 50 seconds left here in the second period. And Peyton still up one to nothing. 43 seconds to work in the second period. And again, Peyton Lane with that one nothing lead. Now, Better slip by Sutterfield. Lane unable to jump in behind and get the takedown. Both wrestlers back on their feet. Peyton actually surprised. Uh, Sutterfield tried a little arm drag and missed it and, and slipped to his, to his bottom, actually. And, and by the time Peyton started pouncing on him, he was moving around very quick and got out of there. That was very fortunate for Sutterfield to get away from that. 15 to work, second period. Peyton Lane leaps it by one. Peyton's nose plug pops out. There's 10 seconds left. If he doesn't get through this. Three seconds, two seconds, and we will head to the final period. Peyton Lane, a one nothing lead. He had a takedown, but the buzzer, the whistle, I should say, had already blown. Man, he did an outside sweep single, and that was pretty. And right as the time was expiring, or that would have been nice two points. This Gregorius runs out, grabs it, says, let's go. <laughs> let's go. He knows his wrestler wants to go. He was trying to. Uh, to tell the cowboy where the plug was, and finally coach said, I got it. And he just raced out, picked it up, and got rid of it. Now, Peyton will work on top with a one nothing lead as Sutterfield shows down. He goes right to it and stops him by riding around the spiral ride, so that stopped his stand up. He got him flat on the, on the mat, really burying his head right in the middle of the back of Sutterfield. Good hips, staying on the back of him, working them hands hard, trying to, trying to work some. Some arms and getting some some wrist control. Centerfield trying to get his base. Now I tried to roll through, and Peyton blocks that. They are back to their feet. He'll lift, try to get him back down to the mats. And I will say uh, the official is going to be really quick with the whistle on that side of the mat because that wall is very close to where they're wrestling. And so if both wrestlers are on their feet headed out of bounds, they're not going to be able to finish anything on that end. It's true. You know, you look side to side on the There's three mats mat in this gymnasium and one end there's probably five feet up the wall so Peyton's dug a chicken wing in now he's trying to get a wrist control on the far side Sutterfield trying to keep that arm straight so he can't reach it Lane leads it one nothing with a minute and one to go in the match Peyton doing a good job with the tips really covering well and trying to get them wrist and Sutterfield Field comes up, does a roll through, does a reverse, gets two points right there. So now we're down two to one with 45 seconds remaining in the third period. Lane trying to keep his feet underneath of him. He's on his feet, but heavy off around the shoulders hangs Sutterfield. Now toward the edge, they will stop it on that end of the mat we were just talking about. 34 seconds to work, and Peyton Lane trails now by one. Peyton tripod it up and was just about ready to get out. Sutterfield did a strap on him, held on, and picked him out of bounds. Right back to center here, 34 to work. Lane could tie it with an escape. He had one in the second period. Again, he tripods up. He's got his hands off the mat. He's trying to get wrist control. 25 nice turns. Turns. He goes he to the leg. leg. Now, he might keep on cutting across. With this single leg, he's cut it across. He's got to elevate the leg. Elevate it, elevate it, elevate seconds. There's the reversal, and he's got the lead back. Three to two, Peyton Lane with six seconds. Can he hang on with four, three, two? Peyton Lane's done it. He's headed to the championship semifinal. What a finish. It really was a nice finish on his part. They, they reversal. He started with about 20 seconds, then he, he got it with about eight seconds left. Yeah, he really did, and then he couldn't get Sutterfield had his arm, and we were we were so concerned that he was going to get rolled back over, and he kept fighting to get that arm back, and finally got it back to finish the match. And what a what a nice comeback there at the end. So the freshman is through to the championship semifinals that will wrestle later on at uh, the Tigers. Next up will be Tristan Metters 
who will wrestle at 132. Let's take a time now. We'll kind of assess where we might be at as far as the timing on this match. We'll bring you back here to Hayes right after these. Coverage of regional wrestling on KCLY is brought to you in part by Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales, Guys the Roofing and Home Improvement, Oldie Seed Farms, Hanson Ford of Clay Center, Central Valley Ag, The Ryan and Mullen Law Office, by Farmway Co-op, and Court Street Veterinary Care in Clay Center. Girton Propane has been providing services and employment opportunities since 1954. Continued growth keeps them on the lookout for qualified company and owner-operator drivers. If you're interested in joining the Girton team, call Andy at 800-232-0170. Girton transports liquid commodities throughout 48 states and is a recognized leader within the transport industry. Girton Propane is committed to excellence, safety, and quality service. Girton, the responsible choice. Now's the time to get your business signed up for a booth at the KCLY Spring Fair. If you're a business owner or if you represent an organization that can benefit from meeting many new potential customers, call KCLY today and ask Joyce or Robin to save your place. The 35th annual KCLY Spring Fair will attract people from the surrounding communities who are interested in learning about and seeing the products and services available. Be a part of the KCLY Spring Fair at the Clay Center National Guard Armory on April 17th. Tires aren't all the same, and neither are tire dealers. So go to Bud's Tire Service, who carries Michelin and BF Goodrich tires. Michelin offers safe, fuel-efficient, long-lasting tires that provide exceptional performance and extraordinary value. BF Goodrich tires are built for drivers looking for high performance and aggressive styling. Next time you need tires, don't deal with amateurs. See the tire experts at Bud's Tire Service in Clay Center with 47 years of experience. Proud supporters of Tiger Wrestling. Reed Bulk Fuel Service of Longford provides bulk fuel and delivers it to your farm or commercial business. You can rely on them year in and year out to supply you with the energy that keeps you on the move and keeps your local economy growing. They offer premium fuels for better performance and fuel efficiency. They also have high quality winter blend diesel fuel. The folks at Reed Bulk Fuel Service of Longford are Tiger Wrestling fans and wish them the best of luck this season. At 132 pounds, Tristan Metters has checked in. We are underway in his matchup as he takes on uh, Walmigo's Alec Pearson, a junior at 23 and 5. Metters had a win by a fall in his first match. Pearson had a bye, and now Pearson also has a two point takedown right on the edge of the match, able to get an early 2 0 lead on Metters. So right back to the middle we come. Tough match here, that's for sure. Right now, Metters. As the whistle start tries to come to his feet and gets taken right back down by Alex Pearson. And he's got he's riding Alex pretty hard. Pearson of Wamigo is opponent. And Pearson riding now with that two nothing lead. Pearson trying to get his arms back, but no success as of right now. Trying to tilt him. Pearson Trying to trying to tilt, trying to tilt, gets that arm racked in. Right now we come back to our feet, and we go out of bounds. In the matchup against Wamigo, the duel in the regular season, it was an 8-4 final Pearson winning over Metters, but a good match, obviously, that went down to the wire. You know, one thing I've seen, I think, with what I've watched with Pearson, he just gets stronger and stronger as the match goes, I think, sometimes, and that's a really big benefit for on his part. Yeah, you bet. Pearson right now just riding hard and Metters trying to stay in position where he won't get tilted or won't get turned. Looking for that chance to get to his his base and get back up. Right dead center of the mat, so they're right in the middle. Pearson working working hard. He's got a blendy in. He keeps just kind of grinding down on him, really not doing much at all. Down to 26 seconds to go in this opening period. Again, Metters down 2 nothing. Tries to do a roll through tilt. Metters faces out and doesn't let him bring it over. Got that Lundy tied up and just working it hard and grinding him into the mat. 
Tigers will have Hunter Mullen, their next wrestler, at 145. So we'll continue to keep. He'll be the first of that uh, bracket to wrestle. So that could come pretty quickly for us. We'll see the whistling for a stalling. We get a whistle for a stalemate. <clears throat> so we start back in the middle. Christian tries to come to his feet. Letters take him back down at the end of the period. We're still behind two to nothing for that takedown in the first period. So it'll be choice to Metters, and this will be the start of the second. Okay. Yeah. Two nothing trailing is Tristan, and he'll work from underneath here. So a little set out switch, got him two point reversal lift, take him back to the mat. Nice move by Tristan. Now it's two to two tied here early in the second. Nice start, Tristan testing. So three to two, we're down three to two right now with minute forty left in the second period. Wrestlers back on their feet after Metters gets the reversal. Nice sweep there and a trip up by Pearson. And did he get the takedown? Yeah, I think so. Yep. A little award by two point five two. Yeah. Well, we need to start just like we did the second period whistle start right here and get that reversal again. Back underway, Metters. Try to get the hips clear as the legs free for a moment. Now Pearson back in position. Pearson missing the beginning of that second period. There's his nice set out. Got got through and then just hip heist through and then got to to, to the round and behind and got the reversal. He cut, missed it that time. There's a tilt by Pearson, so he, he's giving up a couple of back points. It's going to add to what was a 5-2 lead. We'll see what they award. That's Three near ball points. It's eight to two. Tristan Metters trailing here against Alec Pearson of Wamiga. First period, uh, Pearson was trying to do that same move to Metters, and he did a good job of facing it out. That time, Pearson just got enough of him that he got it tilted through and got those back points. Now Metters works from underneath with 37 to go. He's down eight to two here in the second period. Metters is trying to keep that base where he's not going to get tilted again and give up any more back points, so he's just kind of flattened out. He's got a broad base with his legs and trying to keep from anything happening. There's a potential dangerous call, so they stop the match when we go back to center. 20 seconds left here in the second period, down 8-2. to Here's the Wamego is leading. Back underway, 15 to work, second period, and Metters from underneath now as he's flattened out once again. Tries a little set out on that whistle start. Just about had it but Pearson caught a leg and caught up with him. Pearson trying to set a cradle up and he couldn't get that locked but he does break him back down to the mat as the second period buzzer sounds. Down 8-2 we got a ways to go. Pearson from Omega chooses the down position to start the third period. Peyton Lane winning earlier at 120 and a thriller down the stretch won it 3-2 to two, and that put him in the championship semifinal. The Metters will work from on top. Pearson quickly to his feet. Tristan gets him back down on the mat. Now trying and to get some still, points almost. Only got one flag though. Uh, if he just started two seconds earlier. <laughs> could have been good too. Yeah, you're right. Man. Instead, Pearson ends up with a, an escape. Pearson goes with a low, low shot. Metters trying to block that off. Comes in. A lot of big scramble here. Oh, yes. Metters ends up with Pearson to his back. He's going to get a couple of near fall points. That'll put the score at 9-4. to four. I thought maybe we got an escape, a takedown, and two point back. But 9-6 the score. So they did get the takedown and then the two point near fall. Pearson just got an escape, so... He gets one there, so it's six to ten. It's single leg duck under seven, by Metters. Single. There's a two point take take down. down. Now it's ten eight. He's got a strap in if he can drive it. Can't quite get there. Then he said something about getting stronger as the match goes on, and that's what we're seeing again. A lot of scramble and moves going here back and forth. Fifty seconds left. Here he tries a little tilt again. Can't get it. Here's some got a leg caught. Now near the edge and a two point take down reversal, reversal, I should say, by Pearson. They do whistle it to a stop. So Metters down 12-8 with 40 seconds to work. Dang, that's a tough one there to give up. Run back to center, Coach. 
Coach Pagaris is yelling at him, let's go, let's go. Short time, I could see Coach Davis say as well. And Matters now tried to get those hips out, now flattened out to the mat. From four points down, trying to work his way back in at 30 seconds to go. Pearson just caught Matters' leg when he was coming up. And he almost got away from it, but he didn't. So he got back down to the mat. Now he's just kind of putting his shoulder right in the middle of Matters' his back and driving him flat to the mat. 12-8 with 11 seconds to go. Now we've got a stalemate called with 11 seconds to work. The netters is with to get a great battle. Figure out the difference between a stalemate and a stalling. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to explain it, Cameron. I have a feeling, right? 10 there's, seconds now. Netters hits a whistle switch from hit the switch right at the whistle and it wasn't quite there. So three seconds off and two, and uh, Tristan Metters will drop to the backside, cross-bracketing after a really tough battle against Alec Pearson of Wamego. It's a 12-8 loss for Tristan Metters. And the Tigers' Hunter Mullen is next up at 145, and they should be getting pretty close to that match. Let's take another time out here. Again, Tristan Metters, a uh, loss 12-8. Before that, Peyton Lane winning a 3-2 decision. Hunter Mullen next to wrestle for the Tigers when we come back. Coverage of regional wrestling on KCLY is brought to you in part by Clay County National Bank, Tram Chrysler Dodge Jeep of Manhattan, Reed Bulk Fuel Service of Longford, McGee Roofing of Clay Center, by Ray's Apple Market, Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy and Radio Shack, Bud's Tire Service, and the Citizens National Bank of Clay Center, Greenleaf, Concordia, and Belleville. It's always great to get support from family and friends at academic and sporting events. The Clay Center community shows our kids plenty of Tiger pride. And the Ryan and Mullen Law Office takes this opportunity to let the wrestlers know how proud they are of you. You lead a busy life, keep your grades up, pour your heart into every practice, and make sacrifices to ensure you're the best that you can be. Keep working, stay focused, and you will accomplish your goals. Tiger wrestlers, your fans are behind you all the way. There's a great expression for when someone talks a good game and doesn't back it up. All hat and no cattle. You're either a cowboy or you're not. You're either in agriculture or you're not. We are. We make ag loans. Always have, always will. Making things grow is in your blood. It's in ours too. Citizen State Bank. Marysville, Waterville, and Hanover. Member FDIC. Radio Shack is still open in Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy, and Radio Shack will continue to supply your electronic needs. From a great selection of tablets, no-contract phones, audio accessories, Bluetooth devices, electrical components, and more, Radio Shack will still be here for you. You can count on them to help you with your digital gadgets and electronic gizmos that you rely on for work, leisure, and entertainment. You have questions? They still have answers. Radio Shack, located inside Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy in Clay Center. Again, the Tigers working here at 145 pounds. Hunter Mullen, he's not yet on the mat. It should be coming very soon. They are wrestling the 138-pound weight class now. Uh, the second round is going to feature Peyton Lane, who won by a 3-2 decision earlier. And so he's on to the championship semifinals. Then we saw Tristan Metters at 12-8 loss. He will drop to the uh, cross-bracketing on the backside. At uh, 145, Hunter Mullen to wrestle this round against Mecklemore of Flamigo, so another Tiger Red Raider matchup there at 152. It will be Thomas Rickley at a first round bye. He will face a Nate, uh, Bailey Yarborough, who won by fall over Nathan Nelson of Chapman. So Yarborough will be Rickley's opponent. And I uh, still need to update some brackets uh, from that point on. But we do have Gabe Ware in this round. He had a first round bye. Ryan Tears won by fall. He will take on Flamigo's uh, Case and Beats. 182, Zeph Bloom had a first round by his opponent. Uh, will have to fill in that portion of the bracket. 220, Evan Stanley advanced, and he will take on Blaze Lehman of Abilene. Those all coming up in this round. Let's take another time now. Benny and I are working to decide who needs to vacate and go to the other gym and win. Is the, one of the issues we're trying to figure out with Thomas Rickley, his time schedule in that other gym. They do have three weight classes if you're just joining us. They wrestle all the first-round matches in the main gym with three mats going. 
And then in the second round, they took the 126, 152, and 195 pound weight classes, and their second round matches are wrestled in an adjacent gym on one mat. Uh, so that's uh, part of uh, the puzzle we'll piece them together here for you. Okay. Four and regional championship coverage will continue. Four and regional championship wrestling continues from Hayes High School. Rocky Downing along with Benny Wallace. Now at our studio engineer post is Chase Elliott. We have Hunter Mullen checking in. It'll be a matchup against the Wamego Red Raiders. We had one earlier uh, between the Tigers, Tristan Metters, and Alec Pearson. Hunter Mullen did not face uh, this Wamego Red Raider in the duel earlier this year. In fact, uh, the Red Raiders were open at 145, so Hunter didn't get a chance to wrestle that evening. But he will here tonight. And then 145 pounds. This is the uh, front side quarterfinals. His matchup is Griffin Mecklemore, a freshman from Wamego. And we are underway. Hunter, deep shot in there quickly. Just get the leg back to their feet and now locked up head to head. Mullen made short work in his first match, getting a win by fall. He did Mecklemore, good looking freshman. I mean, he's, very, he's tall, looks very strong. There's a head switch. Sweeped it away and got the outside sweep, I guess. He kind of shucked the head by and then swept the outside leg. He's already got a leg in, broke, breaking him down. They are on the edge of the mat. There's a half from that side, though, which drives him back to the center. He's getting to his back. He's going to get some near fall points, maybe some more. The official taking a look. Taking a look at Hunter Mullen. Gotta, and there it is, the pin for Mullen. Quick work again. The Dozer has now made his way to the championship semifinals, a win by fall over McLemore of Wamigo. So, Hunter Mullen is through, and that is getting it done, right? It is. What's he spent? What, how, a minute on the mat? Maybe. Maybe. It's that great job. Yeah, great stuff from uh, Hunter Mullen. Benny, I'm going to let you take off. He's headed to the other gym, so we can keep you posted on what's happening there. We have Thomas Rickley at 152. It's likely, though, we'll be wrestling one of the other matches here before we get to that weight class as they uh, do have uh, some weights going in the other gym. But Benny's headed that way. We'll conference with him and have a chance to uh, bring you coverage for both gymnasiums. Right now, I'll take another time out. We'll take a two-minute break and be back with four of the 4A Regional Championship. What's in your crock pot tonight? Kier Swiftway has some great options that will fill your home with delicious aromas when it's dinner time. Arm roast is $4.99 a pound and pork sirloin roast for $1.89 a pound. Both will be perfect with best choice russet potatoes for $1.99 in the 10 pound bag. Or make turkey chili and pick up honeysuckle ground turkey for $2.99 a pound. Kier Swiftway also has seafood specials for the Lenten season. Shop at Kier Swiftway in Clay Center, Washington, and Mankato. Tires aren't all the same, and neither are tire dealers. So go to Bud's Tire Service, who carries Michelin and BF Goodrich tires. Michelin offers safe, fuel-efficient, long-lasting tires that provide exceptional performance and extraordinary value. BF Goodrich tires are built for drivers looking for high performance and aggressive styling. Next time you need tires, don't deal with amateurs. See the tire experts at Bud's Tire Service in Clay Center with 47 years of experience. Proud supporters of Tiger Wrestling. Court Street Veterinary Care provides the best care for their small animal patients. They offer full service veterinary care along with grooming and boarding. They also remind pet owners that February is Dental Health Month, so give them a call and schedule your pet's dental exam today. Preventative health care with a dental routine can increase your pet's life. Dr. Eva Stanley and her staff at Court Street Veterinary Care wish the Clay Center Tiger Wrestling Team the best of luck at postseason. Go Tigers! Save time and gas and easily deposit checks from the comfort of your home. United Bank and Trust is pleased to offer our newest mobile banking feature, Mobile Deposit. There's no need to make that extra trip to the bank to deposit a check. Simply endorse, click, and submit your check image for deposit. Speak with your local branch representative on qualification details on how to apply Mobile Deposit. United Bank and Trust. You bank, we deliver. Member FDIC. Mobile remote deposits functional on iPhone and Android apps only. Data rates may apply. Check with your mobile phone carrier for details. Well, Hunter Mullen, a win by fall. He has pinned both of his opponents today, and Mullen's headed on to the championship semifinals at 145 pounds. We do have uh, Thomas Rickley that will go at 152 pounds, Gabe Ware at 160, Ryan Tears at 170, Zeb Bloom at 182, and Evan Stanley at 220. Those are all uh, second-round championship quarterfinal matches 
that will be wrestled in this round. Benny has gone over to the other gym. When we have a chance, we'll get uh, we'll talk with him, and he will have Thomas Rickley's match. I'll keep you up to date on what's happening here in this gym uh, with the other weight classes. They did move the 126, 152, and 195-pound weight classes to that other gym with one mat, and that only affected us as far as Thomas Rickley's match. And so uh, he is... Uh, Benny is over there getting ready for that. We also have uh, Gabe Ware, looks like, about to check in at 160. So he is making his way to the mat. Gabe at 160 pounds is going to be, after a first round by, wrestling here in the second round, trying to make his way to the championship semifinals. Pull that bracket up for you. His opponent will be coming from Bueller, Cole Brown, a senior at 23 and 16. Where is a junior at 18 and 6 on the season? And we are ready to go here underway for Gabe Ware at 160 pounds. And Gabe with a lift early. His opponent's almost straight to his back. Brown does roll over to his front side, but Ware's going to have the two-point takedown early and, and lead it. And then he had two back points out of that as well as he took him right to his back. So it's a 4 nothing start, 20 seconds into the first period here for Gabe Ware. Now Gabe has a tight waist in with the arm barred across the back and working near the edge of the circle. Again, uh, Benny, when uh, Thomas is getting close, will be joining us from uh, the other gym where they are working in the uh, three different weight classes, including Thomas Rickley's at 152 pounds. They've gone outside the circle here, so they bring him to a stop. Brown of the opponent, the Bueller for Gabe Ware, has uh, tied his shoe real quick after they've gone off the mat or reapplied the, the anklet anyway. Now they're back underway. You see the Tiger coaches trying to peek over into both gyms between the doorway and the uh, two adjacent gyms here at Hayes. Now Gabe's got that arm barred again, trying to scoop the head. Almost had him in position to go to his back. Now both wrestlers to their feet. Gabe Ware still has a front headlock. Now down to a single leg. No escape yet, although Brown's been close a couple of times. Now Ware's got that leg, and now Brown tried to set up a throw as they fall out of bounds. They will give the escape to Brown. It's 4-1. Gabe Ware does lead it by three points. We're still in this first period, 50 seconds left to work. Oh, great single leg by Gabe Ware. Got him tripoded up now, try to get position to sweep the leg, wants to keep him near the middle of the mat. Now shugs him down and actually was right to a cradle, and now he takes his opponent to his back. So Gabe Ware has great position here with 30 seconds to work, and there's the pin for Gabe Ware. So the Tigers have their third in the championship semifinals. Gabe Ware went from that uh, outside single leg and had him tripoded up right to a cradle and then took him to his back, and he's on to the championship semifinals with a win by fall in his first match here after a first-round by for Gabe Ware. Let's take another timeout. We should be hearing from Benny Wallace very soon. We also have Ryan Tears at 170, Zeb Bloom at 182, and then at 220, Evan Stanley again, Thomas Rickley at 152 in uh, the adjacent gym. We'll take this time out. You're listening to Tiger Wrestling on 100.9. Planting your seed at the right depth is critical for a good stand and a maximum farming return. That's why you should consider installing the hydraulic downforce on your planter. Hydraulic downforce is a way to ensure that we get the correct amount of pressure on the grow units to place the seed at the right depth to get the best stand we can. The hydraulic downforce is an investment in your planter that pays off. On the average, we can get 10 bushel acre over your standard factory spring. Talk to Central Valley Ag now about the hydraulic downforce force. It's been 50 years since the first Mustang was unveiled, and this year's model shares some striking similarities with the first generation. The shark bite front grille, the aggressively canted front hood, the iconic fastback, and the signature three vertical taillight stripes, which are unmistakably Mustang. The 2015 Ford Mustang gives you speed-enhanced performance with 435 horsepower, and it's hungry for fun, not fuel. See the 2015 Ford Mustangs on the showroom floor at Hanson Ford and Clay Center, or online at HansonFord.com. 
To make sure your wheat crop is as bountiful as possible, it's time to finish up with the top dressing boost from Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales. The field specialists Brent, Allen, Darren, Kent, Mike, and Kenny Beach have experience and knowledge in a variety of aspects concerning crop producers like you, such as soil analysis, plant nutrition, pest diagnosis, yield monitoring, water management, and even regulatory and environmental issues. Call the guys you can trust for good advice at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales. Hurry, time is running out to get signed up for the 2015 Color Race. Join us on March 21st for this fun and crazy 5K sponsored by Twin Valley. Proceeds benefit CARE, the local animal shelter being built in Place Center. Feel free to bring your dogs, too. To be guaranteed your shirt and goodie bag, you must sign up before the February 27th deadline. Visit twinvalley.net slash color for all information and to get signed up. We hope to see you on March 21st at the Color Race. Do you ever get tired of waiting for your monthly bank statements to show up in your mailbox? Sign up for our new e-statements at Union State Bank and receive your monthly statement as soon as it's ready. With our new e-statements, you gain a more secure way of checking your monthly transactions and the added convenience of being able to check your statements anywhere that you have internet access. Plus, you'll be helping us to go green by processing less paper each month. Call or come in to our convenient locations to get signed up for e-statements today. Union State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Well, a little bit of a waiting game right now for the 152-pound weight class and the other gym, so I'm still waiting to hear if there is, uh, I think, the call we're looking for. I'm going to take another time out right here. We'll get back to you in just a moment. At Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy, the pharmacists are committed to making sure you understand the instructions that allow your prescriptions to be taken safely and effectively. They'll take the time to counsel you and set your mind at ease concerning your medications. Patterson's has health care aids such as walkers, canes, and lift chairs to help you with your daily mobility needs. Putting the care into health care is Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy with locations in Clay Center, Abilene, and Salina. This is Keith Blake with Union State Bank. I feel fortunate to work in downtown Clay Center and to be able to see the historic and picturesque Courthouse Square every day. Union State Bank has been a cornerstone of the community since our founding in 1901. We have endured many economic cycles during this time, which has helped us grow stronger and more secure. We stand ready to help farmers, businesses, and consumers thrive and grow. We're committed to working with you with whatever your financial needs may be. Union State Bank, member FDIC. When your unique health concerns require a specific medication compound that is made just for you, the pharmacists at Patterson Health Mart are qualified to do so and will even consult with your physician if needed. Compounding medications to address your unique health needs is an important part of the personalized care you can expect from the pharmacists at Patterson Health Mart in downtown Clay Center and also at Patterson Apothecary near the hospital. Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy, putting the care into health care. Once again, back in Hayes, working our way through getting connected between a couple of different gyms. I'm going to take another time out here. When we come back, we'll have Benny Wallace with us here from Hayes as well as Thomas Rickley gets set to go at 152. Even in today's computer age, some folks like to keep their records the safe and old-fashioned way. Like chiseling them into large stones? Not that old-fashioned, Roscoe. Here at Central Office, we stock those hard-to-find farm and small business record books, columnar pads, dome auto record and home budget books, and more. Plus, to add it all up, we've got the Canon heavy-duty printing calculator on sale for $75 and adding paper for $7.45 per pack of 12 rolls. As you get ready for tax time, come see us at Central Office in Clay Center. 2015 is a monumental year for the Citizens National Bank as it marks their 100th anniversary. Throughout the year, the Citizens National Bank will be celebrating a century of strength and stability with many events and surprises planned. Be sure to like their Facebook page so you can stay on top of all these exciting events. This is a significant milestone of providing personalized service and a century of success. The Citizens National Bank, member FDIC. Graduating high school seniors, listen up. Farmway Co-op is offering five $1,000 scholarships to assist the further education of Kansas students. Farmway Co-op is committed to improving, encouraging, and empowering the healthy development of our students. So make sure you apply before the March 1st deadline. Applications can be found at any Farmway location or download one online from farmwaycoop.com. Farmway Co-op, your partner in 
When you shop at Ray's Apple Market, don't be surprised at all the lower priced items you'll find in every aisle. It's just part of bringing more savings to you every day, every week. Your money will go farther when you shop at Ray's Apple Market as they have over a thousand grocery items and household products at new lower prices. Ray's Apple Market continues to bring you value, quality, and service to ensure customers get the best of what they have to offer. This is, after all, your town, your store. And we do welcome you back again to Haynes, as promised. We do have Benny Wallace with us. He was just side-by-side side a moment ago, now in uh, the side-by-side side gym here at Hayes. One mat going, and, and Benny, they're getting close to the match. Is that correct? Yeah, he's actually taking the match right now against Bailey Yarborough from McPherson. Well, Benny, I'll let you take it away, and if Ryan Tears gets on the mat, I'll, uh, I'll jump in and join you there. But go ahead and take it away. Okay, well, they're just shaking hands right in the middle of the mat right now, so... Here we go with Yarborough from McPherson, record of, of 7 and 17. He's a freshman. Right away, Thomas Rickley goes right for a lower shot. It's not there. Yarborough blocks it. A lot of head fighting right now. He's got him a front headlock. Flips out of that. Comes in from behind and gets the two point takedown. Very close to the mat right now on the edge. I mean, and they go on out of bounds. Nope, they stay in. He swings on around, brings him back to. The center. Rickley, long, long, tall, and we know how uh, flexible he is. He's really working hard, getting a little tilt, not quite there, so he comes back in behind, slips a chicken wing in, tries to drive that. It's not quite there, so he tilts closer towards him, pulls him, pulls him in, and Yarbrough blocks that off, so. Right now, Rickley trying hard. He's trying to get him turned to get some back points, and just not quite nothing there yet. Rickley driving that chicken wing high and hard, but he posts the head. Now he keeps on. Now he's going to switch the chicken wing arm. Gets him turned over, so now he does have him on his back. Getting back points flag, so he's going to get some, some much needed points and very close to a pin. Right there, it slicks to me from here. There it is. So, Cannon moves on into the next round, and we know that his opponent will be pretty sure that Mike Rickley Michael from Goodland won the last match. So, well, Rickley advances on here in the in the second gym. Benny, great call and a, and a great start for Thomas Rickley and his senior weekend here at the 4 Regionals. We'll take a timeout. We should have Ryan Tears about ready to go at 170 when we come back next. The Northeast Kansas First Trials are in, and the Old East Seed 2414 Corn Hybrid takes first place with an impressive 208.6 bushel performance, outperforming 35 other hybrids in four locations. And if you're concerned about managing risk this season, ask about our new drought guard hybrids that are delivering record yields. Contact Old East Seed today at 877-692-4555. That's 877-692-4555. If you're looking for a construction company you can really trust, listen to those who have used Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement. One customer was very impressed with the crew's work on their project, and another one praised the team for their truly extraordinary job they did on their new family room. Read more testimonials at GeislerRoofing.com. They've been serving North Central Kansas for over 35 years with quality craftsmanship and integrity. Visit G-E-I-S-L-E-R Roofing.com. A history of excellence that defines Clay Center Tiger Wrestling and at Clay County National Bank, we are building our own history of excellence. I'm Julie Hamill and we're proud to help sponsor the coverage of the Tiger Wrestlers this season. We recognize and salute these young men and the coaches who continue to strive for excellence. Join us in applauding the efforts and accomplishments of the Clay Center Tiger Wrestlers or Clay County National Bank, member FDIC. Once again, the Tigers on a roll here in this uh, quarterfinal round as they post another victory, another pin with Thomas Rickley. We're now waiting for Ryan Tears to get a chance to go. He's waiting in the wings over behind the uh, scorer's table. There are three matches uh, taking place, and now we are back with uh, the rest of the Tiger wrestlers in this round. We'll be in this gym. In fact, uh, Benny Wallace 
has already made his way back over. You guys good, man? I uh, try my best. It's kind of hard solo. You make it so much easier when I'm side by side with you, that's for sure. Well, it was a great call, and uh, both of the guys that, as I was solo over here with Gabe Ware, he made quick work, and Thomas Rickley did the same. So two good pins. And how about this round with the Tigers right now? It's really good. It's, you know, it's always momentum. It's just like anything, and you get a, a good little momentum going, and that's that's always awesome because they feed off each other, that's for sure. Absolutely, and uh Brian Tears, I was just saying, kind of waiting in the wings behind the scores table for his mat to uh, open up. And he should be going here before too long. We'll get another Tiger timeout. You're listening to Clay Center Tiger Wrestling on 100.9. Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep is a proud supporter of Tiger Athletics. Whether you're looking for a tough Ram truck for work or a sporty new Dodge Challenger for play, Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep has you covered. During Ram Truck Month, get 0% for 72 months or up to $10,000 on a new Ram. The area's only five-star certified dealership is Shram Chrysler Dodge Jeep on West Anderson in Manhattan and online at shramcars.com. Go Tigers! You depend on your farm equipment to perform whenever you need it, so when it's not running right, take it to Anderson Equipment of Clay Center. Their skilled mechanics can track down the problem and repair it quickly. No matter the make or model, Anderson Equipment can repair your semi, tractor, and diesel-powered trucks and pickups. You can depend on them to provide quality service. Anderson Equipment is your diesel specialist. Call 800-466-3370. Read Bulk Fuel Service of Longford provides bulk fuel and delivers it to your farm or commercial business. You can rely on them year in and year out to supply you with the energy that keeps you on the move and keeps your local economy growing. They offer premium fuels for better performance and fuel efficiency. They also have high-quality winter blend diesel fuel. The folks at Reed Bulk Fuel Service of Longford are Tiger Wrestling fans and wish them the best of luck this season. Do you believe professionalism should be rewarded? When you find a contractor who shows up early, works long days, gets the job done on time with expertise, cleans up so well you can't tell they've been there except for the fact their work is finished and looking great, you know that's the only contractor you'll ever want to hire. These are words that an actual customer has used to describe McGee Roofing. The customer has used McGee Roofing twice and will again. Reward professionalism, hire McGee Roofing. Back once again in Hayes. Let's get a look through this round that has uh, been going on with the Tigers. And what a round it's been thus far. Championship quarterfinals and advancing to the championship semis are Peyton Lane at 120 pounds. And what a total that was to get this round going, if you remember the reversal in the closing seconds to get the one-point win. And at 126, or at correction, 132, Tristan Metters, really tough battle against uh, Pearson of Juan Eagle, but lost 12-8. to 8. And Hunter Mullen, very quick work, a win by fall at 145 over Mecklemore of Juan Eagle. He's on to the championship semis at uh, 152. You just heard Benny with the call on Thomas Rickley's match over uh, Yarborough of uh, McPherson. That put him in the semifinals. And then Gabe Ware right here in this gym with a very quick pin over Cole Brown of Mueller that puts him into the championship semis. And now the Tigers still have uh, Ryan Tears, Zeb Bloom at 170 and 182, and Evan Stanley at 220. They could join those other, boy, we have four thus far into the championship semifinals. So that's exciting stuff. Yep. Good, good round for the Tigers. The uh, next to wrestle will be at 170 pounds. That's Ryan Tears. And I think we are to the next available match. Uh, I believe, at this point. So we should have him coming up very quickly. We'll take another time out here. You're listening to Tiger Wrestling on KCLY. Girton Propane has been providing services and employment opportunities since 1954. Continued growth keeps them on the lookout for qualified company and owner-operator drivers. If you're interested in joining the Girton team, call Andy at 800-232-0170. Girton transports liquid commodities throughout 48 states and is a recognized leader within the transport industry. Girton Propane is committed to excellence, safety, and quality service. Girton, the responsible choice. It's always great to get support from family and friends at academic and sporting events. The Clay Center community shows our kids plenty of Tiger pride. And the Ryan and Mullen Law Office takes this opportunity to let the wrestlers know how proud they are of you. You lead a busy life. Keep your grades up. 
pour your heart into every practice and make sacrifices to ensure you're the best that you can be. Keep working, stay focused, and you will accomplish your goals. Tiger Wrestlers, your fans are behind you all the way. The Clay County Wrestling Club has been the starting point for many area wrestlers who are now at the high school level. It has always been an excellent program where young athletes could learn the fundamentals of wrestling along with intermediate and advanced techniques. It's the foundation where many athletes become successful on the mat, in the classroom, and the community. The Clay County Wrestling Club takes this opportunity to wish Clay Center Tiger and Riley County Falcon wrestlers the best of luck during postseason wrestling. What's in your crock pot tonight? Kier Thriftway has some great options that will fill your home with delicious aromas when it's dinner time. Arm roast is $4.99 a pound and pork sirloin roast for $1.89 a pound. Both will be perfect with best choice russet potatoes for $1.99 in the 10 pound bag. Or make turkey chili and pick up honeysuckle ground turkey for $2.99 a pound. Kier Thriftway also has seafood specials for the Lenten season. Shop at Kier Thriftway in Clay Center, Washington, and Mankato. Back once again in Hayes as we work our way through this second round of the 4A Regional Championships. Ryan Tier is making his way over to the mat. He'll be uh, checking in and going here very quickly at 170 pounds for the Clay Center Tigers, and this will be a chance to move on to the uh, championship semifinals with the win here. We have tig four Tigers that have made their way through. Also, Zeb Bloom will be coming up in this round, and Evan Stanley as well for the uh, Clay Center Tigers. Ryan Tears checking in, facing the Wamego Red Raider. Map one, as we can see what's going on. With it. Got the scoreboard in view and both wrestlers. Now we almost had a start. The official made sure the scores table was ready. Now we're underway. Here, certainly with length against uh, his much uh, bulkier opponent here at 170 pounds. Ryan made quick work of his first round. Getting in here in the quarterfinals. There's a good duck under and single leg by his opponent from Wamigo. Here's one by decision five nothing earlier in the year on this. On right now, he looks like he's almost gotten taken down. He's feeling to try and get away, and he does. Oh, he avoided a really tough situation because there was a deep single leg in there by uh, Wamigo's deep. So no score. A minute 19 to work. We're in the first period. Kind of a scramble there, and Deets ended up behind behind uh, Ryan, and I thought maybe Ryan was about ready to put weight on his hands on the mat and give up the two, and then he started peeling and, and avoided that. Now, Sears has a pretty good work going on the outside with a double leg, but they run out of room with 59 seconds to work. They'll come back to center. Ryan Sears winning by fall earlier. To get into this quarterfinal matchup, he beat the Collins of Topeka Hayden. Ryan just kind of that cool, collective type, you know, and he just doesn't doesn't show a lot of emotion, you know. And he's a good poker player. Yep, he would be uh -huh. very good. And uh, right now they're just hand fighting in there. Ryan tried to get a little shot, but there's a little duck under nice. He got him behind him. Take him to the mound. Two point takedown. Great start here in the opening period for Ryan Tears. Nice little change of elevation. Little duck under. Got a nice two point takedown. He's working in wrist right now. Trying to stay heavy on him. He shoves him on out of bounds. 18 seconds remaining here in the first period with Ryan leading two to nothing. And Tears walks. He more meanders back to the middle, doesn't he? He definitely has his own <laughs> style, which is you know, awesome. And he does an ankle pick here to start the whistle start. Gets that, drives it up, breaks the opponent down. Deets. Yeah, Deets is a senior. And Tears is going to lead 2 nothing going into the second period. So, very good start. We'll see whose choice it is. And he's ridden him well. Yeah, he's taking him down, which is a good sign. So, Brian's going to start on the bottom position. His choice. To start the second period. Deets starts on Ryan's right side. Goes to a little scrap, and Ryan comes to his feet. He tries to pull him back. He's trying to switch him as soon as he hits the mat. He's got the arm in. He elevates the leg. Right now, he's just got to block that head. He's trying to get around behind there. He steps over and gets the two points. Trying to go to a cradle out right of it, right too. Into a, right into a cradle. Doesn't get the cradle locked up. 
really close to getting some back points, but it's not there. Deep spellers back down. Here's the lead it 4 nothing here in this second period. And now, as you mentioned in the first, after he got the takedown, he rode very well. He's got that chance again. Got the leg hooked down there a little bit. Was trying some things. Now he's gone back up. He's getting get back to his face. Ryan straps him. Kind of pulls, it, pulls on that and gets him flattened back out. He's trying to dig a half in on the far side. It's not there, so it goes back to the other side. Continues working. Minute three to go here in the second period. It's a 4 nothing Ryan Peters Lee trying to become the fifth Tiger into the championship semis here at the regional. Ryan's got a leg hooked over the top. He's let deep reach back and grab his leg and suck it up towards his head. And now Ryan's got a cross face in. Still has his left leg hooked over deep to the right leg, so he lets go of the leg and gives up on that. Ryan's trying to drive him forward and get him to go, and he drives him up. He stands up to his feet and he has to release him. So he leads four to one. Here's leading here in this second period. Twenty six to work. And they're back back on their feet. Little hand tie up and they break apart. Twenty seconds left. Really nice Brian to get a little two point takedown right here at the end of the second period. They go out of bounds, fourteen seconds remaining. They go back to center. He almost got to the outside single leg off that little shuck by but couldn't catch it and was running out of room. Ten seconds now left in the period. Ryan gets the left underhook in, and that goes away. He grabs the wrist and peels it back. And the second period closes. Content to end up in the second period. Well, Amigo's choice here, and again, Kears has ridden really well and almost turned him a couple of times, so Ryan will lead 4-1 to one going to the final two minutes of this match. Back underway in the third. Start. Ryan goes right to that ankle, picks it, drives it forward, and now he's strapping. Let's go with that. He's trying to break him down. Achieve like a Lundy. That's not there. Goes back to a strap. Working that strap hard and staying heavy, heavy on his shoulders. It's so much length on his opponent in this matchup, and he's used it to his advantage. Not trying to put a ball and chain, goes away. Well, still trying to work it in there. He's really doing a lot of different things to try and work it work hard and show the official he is and he is. Right now he's got a an arm that he's pulling across and trying to go into it and drive it through. Nothing there yet. There he elevates the leg. He finally gives up a couple back points. Ryan really trying to smother him down and get him to his back. I, oh, he just missed the reverse half so he goes on through and goes around but we do get two back points. Six to one, the lead for Ryan Tears. We also have Zeb Bloom about to go in the middle mat here. Benny just checking in now. Ryan, good control there. So Zeb starts out with a nice little shot. Zeb wrestling the Flamingo. Joseph McPherson, McPherson actually. McPherson there. Zeb's got a little outside pick. There, good job. Drives right through, takes him to his back. Zeb gets the reverse half in. Oh, he's got to elevate. He's got to elevate. He does. Now he gets him near up to his back. Also, tears are taking a close look at him. He's going to get more back points. He may get more than that. He's got 20 seconds. Ryan Tears really close. And he gets it. Third period, 10 for Ryan Tears. He's to the semifinals. And now back to Zeb Bloom working. Zeb gets that half, man. He's trying to drive through it. There he gets him. Pulled through, man, he's strong. And actually, Zeb gets reversed here, but he still Zeb leads five back. to two. Then he reversed it. He, just, <laughs> he was reversed, and he just reached back, grabbed his leg, and threw him over the top of him. Just kind of shrugged his shoulders almost to get him on pass, and now he's right back in control at like a 9 2 margin. And I tell you, he was close to getting a pin just a moment ago, but. Give the uh, McPherson wrestler credit for the strength to get out of that position. Nine to two with a minute into the map. <laughs> a lot of points oh, yeah. <laughs> going on. Zip's really trying hard to drive that right half in. It's not quite there, so he goes to the left side. Nothing there. Working him arms hard and trying to stay. Now he's got the half in a little deeper. Driving, driving. The house is really pretty darn flexible. Yeah. You can nice lifting set. That was an awesome lifting set. 
took him over, and now he's getting back points again. He's got to be close. We can't see. Officials him. looking, but it's away from us. They're near the end of the eight seconds. period. Eight Jeff Bloom. That's trying hard. He won't get the pin, but he's going to get more near fall points. He's going to lead it 12 to 2, Benny, going into the second period. Josh wasn't so flexible. That would have been a pin. Yeah. yeah. But he's pretty darn flexible for a guy, and he's taller than Jeff by what? Three inches, maybe? Which is saying a lot. Yeah. So they'll have a point toss that goes to Zeb. He defers. A 12 2 lead to begin the second period for Bloom. Tigers still have Evan Stanley to go in this round as well. We have six through to the championship semifinal. Correction five, that would be the six to be advanced. We're back underway in the second period. Just going out, kind of cheering Zeb on, telling him what to do. Right now, another big scramble. Wow. <laughs> he was always in control the entire time, right? right? on the air, yeah. didn't you? I don't think so. But I can say this. He's got the half locked in again. Well, he did. Now he gives it up. Josh knows that's coming. He's really trying hard to keep away from him. But Jeff doing a really nice job of just going from one side to the next side with that with that half until he finally caught him in the last period. That he turned 12-2. Jeff Bloom leads it here at 182 pounds. A minute 20 to go, second period. That's done a fine job. But now he's still... Got a lunge and tilt on. Oh, he doesn't quite get enough elevation with his legs to get that tilt. Not there. He's staying with that lunge right now. Trying to front stack. It wasn't there. They're working a lot of pin combinations. They're trying to get some back point out of this. The depth has gone from side to side and tried several different combinations. Right now, continuing to ride with a 12-2 lead and 43 seconds left. Joe's almost got to his feet, and Bloom breaks him back down to the back. Good work of hard staying in good hip position. which has done a good job with so far. They just keep on moving, keep on moving. Finally, they work their way to the edge and go out of bounds. So, back to center with 31 seconds left in the second period, up 12-2. to two. So, in good control of this match, has got to stay in good position which he's been working on and doing so far. Back underway with 28 seconds left in the second period. Zeb Bloom leads to 12-2. It looks like he's got a, a cradle locked up. Now he's trying to get around and get into position. He wasn't comfortable with it, so he went ahead and let go of it. Didn't need to take and the risk. You're right, and that's a smart, smart move. move but here he gets reversed, he gets, trying to get out of it. Six seconds left. He's on his back trying to get through. Got to reverse. He, yeah, he's he'll gonna, get to the third period. He's going to lose the points, but he did not obviously get 10, which it was close. He lost three moment. points there, so 7 to 12. <laughs> and we have Evan Stanley about to go to the Tiger. We just heard his name announced. He's checking in. <laughs> Jeff looks over to start the third period, and Coach Brown says, let's start on our feet. So they're going to start on their feet. Down 7 to 12. I'm sure he's going to tell him everything he can to stay in good position. Josh shoots lower level. Jeff stops him with them hips and comes in behind and gets the two point takedown. Goes right into a chicken wing. Hips are staying in behind. Getting that far arm barred. Zeb has to just concentrate on them, them hips and not get too high and try to get reversed. Rematch on that one. Yeah. Devin Stanley plays Lehman of Abilene. They met on final home match of the year with the Tigers. Zeb gets switched and gets reversed. So now gives up two points. It's 9-14. to 14. Zeb's ahead, but there's a little tilt. Then it's seven left. Bloom really is trying to... Get out of the leg range. He's going to give up three. And then Stanley underway, 30 seconds in, no score. They're both in the middle of the match. Jeff Bloom up 14 to 12, 45 seconds left here in the third period. There's another tilt. Going to get back points again. Yeah, trying to stay away from the pin right now. He's got his leg blocked up. Shouldn't be getting pinned on a tilt. You got to know where. Oh, they gave it to it. 
Wow. Wow. So Zeb Bloom, who was leading through almost wow. the entire match, ends up getting pinned with 33 seconds left. That's pretty worthy. <laughs> Not in the tilt very often, but well, it was a touch. It was like a freestyle freestyle pin because it was just a touch and the dude slapped those hands on the mat. I was going to say, I'd like to see where he drove it. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. 30 seconds left. I don't blame you. Boy, that wrestled so well for so long to have that get away from him in the closing 30 seconds. Blade Lehman for the Abilene Cowboys now against the Tigers' Evan Stanley. There's a shot in by Stanley. There's no score. They're about 13 seconds away from the end of the first period. Now with seven, six. Evan's trying to fight through. One second left. Did he get it? Did not give it to him. Not giving the takedown. Very, very close. All four. Devlin wrestled on all four hands, but he had his, all he had was his arm wrapped around the back of Evan's head, so he didn't give him two points. The final wrestler for the Tigers in this round. They've had five advance into the championship semifinals. And on the mat right now for the Tigers, Evan Stanley trying to become number six. Stanley's being forced down flat belly, so he's trying to get a pace up. Right now, the Abilene wrestler working working hard on the wrist. He's got a Lundy, basically hooked the Lundy in, and Evan's trying to get wrist control back and see what he can get done here. Abilene Cowboys place in a Tigers matchup. Scoreless with a minute 20 to go, second period. Very, very close to getting that two-point takedown thing. Mm-hmm. First period always would have been nice to have, but it wasn't there. So, did you see who took? Did we take it down, or did we choose? I did um, not. I was actually worried working on the computer, and we were worried about Zeb's match so yeah. much that I didn't see it. Well, Evan's trying to get base back up, and he kind of does get to his knees. He's going to work that wrist out and get that wrist out. Back to center. They're out of bounds. they got to go back to center. 52 seconds left here in the, in the second period, 0-0 score. Surely Evan Stanley has a very close near takedown. Now he sits out in pretty good position, but unable to finish that off as Lehman gets back into the scene behind. Blaze from Abilene starts on the left side and stays there, and he tries to get that Lundy wrist ride in there again. And Right now, Evan had wrist control almost to his feet, but he, his left arm still tied up, so Blaze pulls him back to the mat. And he gets his face, gets his hips up. Keep Down popping to 20 up seconds. They keep popping up, and then Blaze just keeps pulling the hip and bringing him right back down. Stanley's trying to drive across. Got a hip ice, hip ice. Eight seconds to work. He'd reached back and gotten a control of the leg, but claiming back in control will head to the final two minutes. Still scoreless. Our. our choice and we're taking <laughs> we're taking top we're going to ride here two minutes remain no score and back the other way Stanley starts on top he drives drives that hand in if you remember last time he got Granby rolled twice by this kid let's see if you can stay out of that keeps there trying it is to right that trying for Trying to wing, finally. There it is. He's got the arm. Now he reaches back for the leg. Here it comes. All he's got to do is step back. Blaze does, and Kevin does a good job of blocking it off this time. Forced the head. Got the half in, but they're out of bounds. They're close. Not whistled yet, but now they are. Oh, now they whistled this to stop. Just now. So still no extra score. Extra room on this side. Right. There's no room on the other side for the wall, I guess. <laughs> Even the mat out of the yeah. <laughs> Still 0-0, zero, zero, minute 22. Evan Stanley's riding on top. He's got he to ride him out or turn him. Blaze does a little sit, sit out and comes around, and Stanley just swings all the way through. Blaze's got that arm. He's going to 
Try and do this Granby. There it is. There's the reversal. And so now Stanley with 58 seconds to work, trails 2 nothing, and then a bit of a pickle. And the back points are going to be added, aren't they? So 5 nothing is what the score is going to be. Evan fighting to get out of there, get off his back, and put himself in a bad position here. Down 5 with 40 seconds left. He's trying to kick out. He's trying to do everything he can to get away from there and give himself another opportunity. 35 to work. Tigers had a terrific round going. They've gotten five through. Still a really good round, but they were right in it with Zeb Loom and now with Evan Stanley, 22 seconds. Evan's going to get a reversal here. He comes out the back side gets a reversal. He's got 18 seconds. Down by three. He's got to turn him and blaze. All he's going to do is just flatten out, play dead. Sure. Ten seconds left. Short time, and he leads by three. Stanley battling, fighting. Got the reversal. Two seconds left, one. And that will be the match. Evan Stanley's going to lose a 5-2 decision here at 220 pounds. That'll put Blaze Lehman on into the championship semifinals for Abilene. Stanley, who had won his first match, and then uh, loses here in a really tight 5-2 decision. That's too bad. He was really close a couple of times on that match. And something happening the very end of the first period. Take down. Missed that opportunity, which we thought that he had. And yeah. A couple, of, a couple of little things and a couple of little mistakes in the cost of the match. So here's a wrap-up uh, starting with this final match you just heard. Evan Stanley at 220. He will drop to the uh, consolation cross-bracketing at 182. The same for Zeb Bloom. He lost by fall with 33 seconds left. He has led... Uh, in that match by as many as 10 at one time. So just a really frustrating loss down the stretch. Ryan Tears wins by a fall. He'll be wrestling in the championship semis at 170. Gabe Ware a win by fall at 160 to make the semifinals. Thomas Rickley the same, a pin to make it into the semis. Then you move on over to the uh, Tigers are going to take the mat here. 145, Hunter Mullen advances to the finals, semifinals, and Peyton Lane with that thrilling one. Uh, 3-2 win at 120 to the uh, to the semifinals as well. Here we have Thomas Brandt going at 126 pounds as they've gone right into the consolation round. Brandt's going to trail 2 nothing as he works here in this uh, matchup on the back side against Zimmerman of Hayes. Thomas did a nice job start. He went in right into a headlock and then Zimmerman came out of it and did just a head shock by him and Took him down, and now he's getting turned to his back. So Thomas is fighting now to get off, get off that back, and he does it. Chicken wing still in for his opponent Zimmerman of Hayes. Of course, a one-minute first period in this constellation round, and they are down to ten seconds with Brant trailing two nothing. So the Tigers in this round will have Marty Robinson coming up at 138. Brant getting set to work in the second period. Brent's actually down four to nothing. He gave that two point takedown and two point back. So he's down four to nothing here, ending the first period. Corey Gilbert will not wrestle this round. He'll have a bye at one minute ninety five, and then Michael Peeler will also have a bye in this round. So we just have two wrestling in this round. Start so second period with Thomas Brent's gonna be gonna be on his feet. Shows neutral. That's milk down to the mat a little bit, front headlock. And now Zimmerman trying to lock in a cradle. Has to go in behind. He will get the takedown against Brant. That caught that back leg and took it over. And Marty Robinson just started out Marty on going here. mat three. So Marty does a little outside single sweep. Kick the leg. Kick the leg. Comes around behind and gets a two-point takedown. So Robinson with an early two-point takedown in his one-minute first period. And now Robinson, or uh, Brands, I'll follow over here with a minute 20 to go. He trails 6 to nothing, And now there's going to be more back points awarded. Robinson Nine goes, zero. goes right into a half and puts him right to his back, and it's pretty darn close over there. He's got to run right out of time, though. There's the end of the first period. So nice job there. He gets two points for near fall, I think. They haven't put it on the board yet. Yep. Marty will lead Going to second period, four to nothing. Brant trailing with 55 to work, and he's gotten turned to his back here in the second period, and there is a pin. So Thomas Brant will lose by fall 
here in this second period. He was down 9 nothing and ends up with a, a loss by fall to Zimmerman of Hayes, and that will end uh, the weekend for the freshman. But he came out and battled. Thomas Brandt will uh, will uh, see as we can come to close in the second round. But, you know, as long as you're here and you kind of get a feel of what it is all about, know what's going on, it, it helps you every year that you're out. That's for sure. Many times we see it. You know, you learn from it. The next thing you know, you're you're battling to move on to the next weekend. That's what Marty Robbins is doing right now, but he has had to make his way over to his front side as he's been taken down and almost put to his back. That little fireman's put on him, and he couldn't quite get out of the thing after he it started it, so uh, he found his belly down, belly down, and right now he's still leading 42 here in the second period. This is the consolation first round of the uh, back side of the bracket. Marty's flat on his belly. He's trying to, trying to get his face, trying to get some wrist control. There he gets his hips up. Now he's just digging arms, digging wrists. Opponent grabs his ankle and drives him forward. Latin him back out. And I can't see the scoreboard, Benny. What is the score on this? Marty's up 42. He got that okay. take down with near fall points in the first period and then uh, got taken down here to start the second. So right now, Marty's just trying to stay in good position where he's not going to get turned. He's got a Lundy on him, so he's trying to get that Lundy arm back. Sliding down, he, he wants his hips up, but yet he doesn't want them up, so he's trying to stay in this good position. He's trying to keep from being tilted. He doesn't want to give up any of those near fall points. But we know what official to watch now for when you're even close to your no hitting. If you are, you better be ready. Marty just trying to get wrist control. I think he feels comfortable and he's just waiting for that chance if he can try and get an opportunity for a reversal or an escape. But otherwise, he's just in almost a cover position. Down to just seven seconds left in the period. And that'll send him into the third. Still leading four to two. Senior for the Tigers here, Marty Robinson. A big part of this wrestling program. Love to see him get a chance to hang around for another match and see what happens. His opponent choosing the down position to start the period, so Marty's trying to cut across. Marty's long, and he's usually a very good rider, a pretty darn good rider. He's right. got a half in. He's trying to bury that half in, and he's got it. Got him turned. Tipped him good. This is looking good. Oh. There it is. Marty Robinson with a win by fall would have put him in the cross bracketing round now of this regional championship. Yeah, when his opponent shows down, it was, that was a mistake. <laughs> Hadn't seen him wrestle like we had in FS. No, he had. had his opponent. So Marty Robinson threw for the cross bracketing round. He beat Josh Plant with a win by fall very early in this third period. I believe that is all that we have in this round, the Tigers. In fact, I am uh, certain. Yes. Yeah of that because we have a couple of buys. A buy with Peeler, right? With Corey Peeler. Gilbert and Michael Peeler right. both have buys in this round. So that will be it for this round. We're going to find out what kind of break they'll take in between because it's a very short round, it appears to me. There's only one match going right now. Of course, there are three weight classes, I guess, and uh, the other gym still making working their way through. But we'll find out uh, kind of the timeline of when they'll get the next round going and what kind of break they'll have coming up. We'll be back with four right after this timeout. Tires aren't all the same, and neither are tire dealers. So go to Bud's Tire Service, who carries Michelin and BF Goodrich tires. Michelin offers safe, fuel-efficient, long-lasting tires that provide exceptional performance and extraordinary value. BF Goodrich tires are built for drivers looking for high performance and aggressive styling. Next time you need tires, don't deal with amateurs. See the tire experts at Bud's Tire Service in Clay Center with 47 years of experience. Proud supporters of Tiger Wrestling. Court Street Veterinary Care provides the best care for their small animal patients. They offer full service veterinary care along with grooming and boarding. They also remind pet owners that February is Dental Health Month, so give them a call and schedule your pet's dental exam today. Preventative health care with a dental routine can increase your pet's life. 
Dr. Eva Stanley and her staff at Court Street Veterinary Care wish the Clay Center Tiger wrestling team the best of luck at postseason. Go Tigers! Make sure your seeds go exactly where you want them. Have your planter meters calibrated before you go to the field. Each percent that seed meter is off could relate to one and a half bushels per acre. Central Valley Ag Equipment Specialist Roger Wilton can make sure your seed singulation and spacing follow your planting prescription. If your meter is off three or four percent, suddenly that starts to factor into a lot of dollars. Make sure you get the best stand. Contact your nearest Central Valley Ag. Where the customer comes first. Save money on the best-selling pickup in the country. The highest Ford rebates in history are on the remaining 2014 F-150s at Hanson Ford in Clay Center. These Ford F-150s have earned the right to boast of comfort while delivering a tough, hard-working package and efficiency with its EcoBoost while producing power when you need it. Stop in the Hanson Ford and look over their nice selection of 2014s and save with Ford rebates that have never been higher. Check out HansonFord.net. Play Center Tigers, they are uh, just wrapping up this uh, second round. And uh, Clay Center, of course, has mentioned five into the championship semifinals. We just heard Marty Robinson win by fall in this consolation first round. So he's on to the cross bracketing. Thomas Brandt did take a loss in this round, which will end the freshman's uh, first experience here at the regional championships. But the Tigers have a lot. It's like it's a great experience, absolutely. The Tigers yeah. have uh, a bunch of them still rolling right now. Let's take a 30-second time out. I think we'll get a chance to talk with Coach Begorish when we come back next. Farmers, are you looking forward to getting a jump on those weeds in your corn, milo, soybean, and alfalfa ground? The field specialists at Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales include Brent, Allen, Darren, Kent, Mike, and Kenny Beach, and they stand ready to address the crop challenges you face by tailor-making specific solutions to protect your crops. They work hard to stay on top of the latest innovations in order to bring you the best products to produce the best returns. It's time to call Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Sales. Sales. Have you signed up for the color race yet? On March 21st, Twin Valley is again hosting the second annual color race in Clay Center. The deadline to be guaranteed a t-shirt is February 27th. Don't miss out on the fun. If you don't want to participate, consider volunteering. We need your help. Volunteers get a free t-shirt just for helping. You can throw color, cheer participants on, and much more. To register or volunteer, visit twinvalley.net slash color. See you there. We are back once again in Hayes, and as uh, mentioned, we thought we'd have a chance to talk with Coach Brandon Pigors. Coach, thanks so much for taking time out as this next round will get going before too long. You guys have had a, a start to this weekend that has been really exciting. I know the last two matches were frustrating for you and for the guys out on the mat, but you had a little, little momentum built up there when Peyton Lane won a reversal thriller, and then all of a sudden, pin, 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 pin for you guys. Five in the semifinals. Yeah, you know, you can't be uh, displeased with that. I'm actually happy with the performances. We're fighting, you know, hard until the very end, but, you know, just came up, you know, on the, the wrong side of it. A couple matches there. Um, yeah, I mean... It, those are frustrating, and I know you're just freshly coming off of uh, those uh, matches taking place. But, again, five of the semifinals, and as you said, great performance. What is the setup for, we were just kind of talking amongst ourselves to let our listeners know, when the next round gets going, and what round will that be? Uh, next round, they got going as semis. I think the constellations are actually done for tonight. So okay. we got one round left. Um, you know, we got the five guys going to go tonight. Uh, everybody's in for tomorrow, uh, except for Tommy Brandt, who came out, you know, and, and filled in a spot for uh, Jake Wynn, and he, you know, wrestled very hard, fought real hard, and, and I'm very proud of him. I'm very proud of him for stepping up at, you know, and, and, and stepping into the role that he is. And, you know, this is a great experience for him, and, and, you know, hopefully he'll only grow from it. That's what we hope for. Absolutely. And we were talking about the same things because he did. I mean, he looked like he wanted to go get it, and he got after it and just went up against two really good wrestlers that got him. From a freshman to a senior, I think we ought to mention Marty Robinson staying alive yeah, this Saturday with a pin, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm very, very happy about that for him. Marty uh, had, had a tough time going from 38 this year. Um, you know, started off the year really good at 132, wrestling well, um, have a tough team that we got. So, you know, he had some tough battles and, and with the 132 spot there and ended up filling in at 138 for us. He's done a fantastic job, you know, all four years. But today getting that win for him is a huge momentum boost. And hopefully tomorrow 
he can carry that with him and, and keep himself going. And, and like I said, very happy getting those points, picking up those right there. That's three points we needed for the team, and that's all. And uh, you mentioned tomorrow. We've mentioned to the listeners, but we'll continue to let everybody know they are starting that at 9.30 in the morning. That's a change from what was going to be 11 to try to help beat some of the potential weather that could be around. And, and so 9.30, and those are important matches, as we know, for the wrestlers and for the team. Correct. Those are very, very big matches. Because, you know, every you know every match tomorrow is kind of do or die. Um, either you win, you keep going, you lose, you stay home, or you go home and you know, one of those things. It looks like they'll have an exciting atmosphere. It looks like they got the spotlight set up for the finals tomorrow. So getting started early is, is definitely not an objection of mine. I was all for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, just wanted to get home early, and that was that long drive, uh, you know, with the weather and all that. Hopefully with uh, a bus full of guys getting ready to wrestle again next weekend is yeah. what you guys are all about. I know that. Coach, again, thanks so much for taking time. We appreciate it. Good luck with the rest of today, and I know we'll catch up with you tomorrow morning. Then. All right, thanks a lot. Sounds great. Coach Brandon Pagorge with us from the 4 Regional Championships. We're going to take you back to programming, but when they're set to go in the championship semifinal, the first to, for the Tigers will be at 120 with Peyton Lane. When they're set to go with those five Tiger wrestlers in the semis, we'll bring you back here live to Hayes.